if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I'm always talking about how beautiful Vietnam is. Stunning places. Beautiful people. Amazing food and affordable cost of living. It's really great. Everything sounds great because it really is. Vietnam is a beautiful country and I'm very glad I had the opportunity to experience its wonders. That's why the demand for digital nomads is growing more and more and more people are looking for retirement here in Vietnam. But not everything is perfect, right? There are some things that I don't like about this country. And of course, this is my personal opinion. And please, don't take it the wrong way. I know there are Vietnamese people who are watching my videos. And the purpose of this video is to get an idea of what you can expect living here. Or if you're planning to visit a country when the borders open, of course. And again, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I've been talking a lot of great things that this country offers and of course I still consider this is a great country to live in. In fact, if you're planning to visit this country, uh, this video might be useful, hopefully, so you'll be prepared for the good and for what might confuse you or dislike you. So stick around and I'll show you my personal opinion. As you may know, people here could be the kindest people in the world. They're very helpful and more if you don't speak the language. They are very patient with you and they are always trying to help you. I've stumbled across people that have helped me fix my motorbike, my camera for free. They don't want any money uh, because they are just trying to help. Even though my Vietnamese is very, very poor. We really appreciate that they are very kind. Now, if I have to complain about something, is that queuing up doesn't work properly. A lot of people are cutting lines. It has happened to me quite a lot of times. I consider myself an introverted person, and the first time it happened to me, I thought, ah, oh, it's okay, she's probably in a rush. But no, they kept doing it. I was never going to get to the front of the line. So this is my advice. If you don't hold your position, you'll never get through. And that doesn't mean that all the people do this or that there are in queues. Of course there are, but it's very common for the queue to turn in everything except a queue or for people to ignore the queue just to get to the front of the line. I also want to get to the front of the line. Of course, I'm generalizing. If you're Vietnamese, please let me know in the comments if gender plays a role regarding who cuts. We already know that there's a lot of traffic here in big cities in Vietnam. In fact, there's a lot of traffic in big cities all around the world. That doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I've said before that it kind of works if you get used to it. The first time that you see the traffic here, you may be surprised. You'll probably think that this looks a mess. And uh, yeah, it, ca it can be, but they actually have a system. I'm not going to talk about that system because I've got a whole video about that. You can click here if you want, if you want to watch the video. But what I want to say in this video is the specific things that bothers me. For example, the drivers use the horn to let other drivers or pedestrians 
know that they are approaching, warn them, and to avoid accidents. Most of the honking is not in signal of anger or danger. It's mostly to say, hey, hey, I'm here, be careful. This could sound a good system, but when there's no place to go, there's no reason to honk, right? There are quite a lot of reckless honking, and I personally think the safety purposes are being lost or confused. Somehow, you're supposed to discern and move if you are in the way of someone who is in a hurry and insists on running a red light. That confuses me a lot. When I'm driving my bike, I'm waiting for the red light to turn green and I already have someone behind me who is honking quite a lot because he wants me to run the red light as well. I feel a lot of pressure. I don't know what to do sometimes. I thought, should I do it? I don't know how it works, really. And let's be honest, some people honk on red lights and the sound can be unbearable. And I've even seen people honking when there's nobody surrounding them. What? Why? The noise of the streets never stops, and more if you're living in a big city. I'm kind of used to listening to it, but it's still something that... The noise on the streets never stops, and I personally think there's a big noise pollution in big cities here. What do you think about this? Am I overreacting? As I've mentioned before, people in Vietnam are very kind. Some beautiful people have helped me when I've been in trouble, and I really appreciate that because despite having the language barrier, they are very patient. But there's something that confuses me quite a lot and coincidentally that has happened in established places. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to my husband and I when we recently moved to Da Nang in a fancy restaurant. We were very, very disappointed. Prepare yourself, this is story time. We went to this fancy restaurant because we just recently moved to Da Nang and to celebrate it, we wanted to eat in a great place with a nice environment next to the beach, good food. So I remember it was a Korean barbecue style. So the idea of this is that they bring you the raw meat and you cook it yourself on the table. And the smell of the food, oh. We ordered some meat to prepare it uh, on the table while we were waiting for our food, suddenly something from a boat landed in, into my husband's plate. We thought it was something that the wind brought, so we didn't pay attention. After two minutes, a cigarette butt landed on our table. So there was a guy above in the, on the second floor who was throwing garbage, trash, just on the first floor. And I remember we told the waitress and she told us, well, there's nothing I can do. So we said, okay, let's change tables because there were a lot of empty tables there, over there. And she said, no, I can't do that. Why not? So to make the long story short, it seems she wasn't able to change tables because she needed the permission for the manager in the restaurant. She called the, the manager, of course, because we were upset. The manager came and we thought, oh, finally, we are going to be seated in another table. We told him about our problem and he didn't want to change table, tables. He just told us that everything was going to be fine. We just wanted to change tables. We, of course, got really upset because we didn't want our food to get contaminated. We were very disappointed, but suddenly, I guess the same guy who was upstairs dropped a big rock like this size. It just landed next to the manager. It could have killed them. The end of the story is that he never changed our tables 
and of course we left, we paid our drinks of course and that was the story. And it's not only that story, I have more situations with bad customer service and it happens to be in not cheap places. I've seen they are openly annoyed at customers requests and most of the time make an excuse not to do it. It seems to me that they've got the mentality that they know better than their customers. And curiously, this hasn't happened to me on street food stalls. I don't know if it has to do with bad salaries or maybe bad work environment. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm not sure if I'm prepared for all those comments that I'm going to get for this video, but uh, I think I consider myself brave, I think. This is the next point. Um, there's no social stigma against throwing rubbish on the streets. It's sort of a custom because the street sweepers pick up all the rubbish at night. It must be hard work for them. I've even seen people throwing big bags of rubbish on the streets just because. In some street food stalls, you'll see the locals simply drop the leftovers on the floor until someone else comes along to clean it up. This is totally accepted here, and actually there are some street food stalls and even restaurants that encourage you to do it because they are going to clean it up later and because it's easier. This can make for a disagreeable eating environment, to be honest. However, I've learned to focus on the delicious food and at the end of the day, it's a custom and they do it here. Of course, there are quite a lot of restaurants that they don't do that. In spite of this, I still believe visiting the markets and street food stalls is a must. You'll find authentic food, delicious food with very kind people. Pollution is a problem in major cities. The quality of the air is generally not great. That's not a surprise. I lived in Hanoi for a year and the air quality wasn't good at all. You can't even see the clouds. If you're holiday there, you might not be aware of that, but if you've been there for a while, you'll definitely feel it. I've got friends that told me that they started to feel uh, some symptoms after living there for some months. That's why there are a lot of people, there were a lot of people who were wearing masks before the pandemic because they used them as a way to filter out the dirt. So they weren't breathing so much of it. Of course, the whole country is not like that. Vietnam has a lot of beautiful cities, countryside and small village with clean air. For example, near Hanoi, you can find the beautiful Ninh Binh. I think it's one of my favorite places in Vietnam because you can find a beautiful countryside, clean air and a beautiful scenery. Well, I hope you found this video an interesting video. I think Vietnam has an interesting culture and I totally respect their customs. Of course, there are a lot of things that I don't like about my country as well. For example, I met a guy here, a Vietnamese guy, who told me that we eat quite a lot of fatty food. and. He's right, I think he's right, yeah. And he told me he didn't like that when he went to Mexico because he was eating very unhealthy from his point of view. Thank you very much again for watching this video. Uh, please write your comments below and don't be so hard with me, please. If you want to support the channel, consider visiting my Patreon account. I've got more information over there. So you will help me create more and more videos 
and don't forget to hit the bell so you'll know every time I release a new video and if you like this video don't forget to give it a like leave a comment below and that's it thank you very much and see you in the next video adios Yeah, um, Mekong Delta.